Welcome, fellow seekers of knowledge, to our journey through the fascinating realm of physics. In this digital space, we'll unravel the mysteries of the universe, from the smallest particles to the vast expanse of galaxies. Prepare to be astounded as we delve into the fundamental principles that govern the cosmos and uncover the hidden truths that shape our understanding of reality. Join us as we embark on an exploration of physics like never before, where curiosity knows no bounds and every discovery leads to new horizons. Let's dive in and unlock the secrets of the universe together. Measurement Measurement is a fundamental aspect of physics and our understanding of the physical world. It involves quantifying properties of objects, substances, or phenomena using standard units. These measurements provide essential data that enables scientists to describe and predict natural phenomena accurately. The process of measurement begins by selecting a relevant physical quantity, such as length, mass, time, temperature, or electric charge. A unit of measurement is then chosen to express this quantity. For example, the meter is commonly used for length, the kilogram for mass, and the second for time. These units serve as reference points, allowing scientists across the world to communicate and compare their observations. To perform measurements, various instruments are used. For instance, rulers and tape measures measure length, while balances gauge mass. Time can be measured with clocks, and thermometers quantify temperature. Advanced instruments, like spectrometers and oscilloscopes, enable precise measurements of complex physical properties. Accuracy and precision are crucial aspects of measurement. Accuracy refers to how close a measured value is to the true value, while precision refers to how consistent and reproducible the measurements are. High-precision measurements have small random errors, making them reliable and valuable in scientific research. Uncertainty is an inherent part of measurement. No measurement can be made with absolute certainty due to limitations in instruments and the environment. Scientists use statistical methods to estimate uncertainties, ensuring the reliability of their results. In physics, certain fundamental constants serve as the building blocks for measurement. For instance, the speed of light in a vacuum, C, is a fundamental constant that plays a central role in defining units like the meter. These constants form the basis for standard units and are crucial for precise and consistent measurements. Measurements play a pivotal role in experimental sciences like physics. They allow scientists to formulate and test hypotheses, validate theories, and explore the fundamental principles of the universe. As technology advances, our ability to make increasingly accurate and precise measurements improves, leading to deeper insights into the mysteries of the natural world. Motion along a straight line. Motion along a straight line is a fundamental concept in physics that deals with the movement of an object in a single dimension. It focuses on the object's position, velocity, and acceleration concerning time, all in a straight line. This simplified scenario is an essential building block for understanding more complex motions. Position refers to where an object is located relative to a reference point. If you walk from point A to point B, your position changes along the straight path between these points. The displacement is the change in position, irrespective of the path taken. Velocity is the rate of change of position with time. If you move a certain distance in a specific direction over a given time, you have an average velocity. If your position changes at a constant rate, your velocity is constant. Otherwise, it is variable. Acceleration describes the rate of change of velocity with time. When you start from rest and gradually increase your velocity while walking, you experience positive acceleration. If you slow down, it's negative acceleration, also known as deceleration. There are three types of motion based on an object's velocity and acceleration. An object with constant velocity moves at a steady speed in a straight line. An object with constant acceleration experiences a steady change in velocity, like a ball freely falling under gravity. Lastly, an object with variable acceleration, like a car speeding up or slowing down, has a changing velocity over time. Graphs are useful tools to represent motion. A position time graph shows an object's position at different times, and its slope represents velocity. 
A velocity time graph illustrates an object's velocity at different times, and its slope indicates acceleration. The concept of motion along a straight line is fundamental to various real-world scenarios, including vehicles on highways, free fall of objects, and simple pendulum oscillations. Understanding motion in a straight line is crucial for more complex studies in physics, like projectile motion, which involves both horizontal and vertical motion. By studying motion along a straight line, scientists and engineers can analyze and predict the behavior of objects in simple yet essential situations, laying the foundation for understanding the broader principles of classical mechanics. Vectors Vectors are fundamental quantities in physics that represent both magnitude and direction. They are used to describe various physical quantities, such as displacement, velocity, force, and acceleration. Unlike scalars, which only have magnitude, e.g., temperature, mass, vectors require both numerical and directional information. Imagine you are driving a car. Your speedometer tells you the magnitude of your velocity, but it doesn't provide information about the direction you are heading. In this case, your velocity is a vector quantity, combining both speed and direction. If you drive east at 60 km per hour, the vector representing your velocity would be 60 km per hour east. Vectors can be visualized as arrows. The length of the arrow represents the magnitude of the vector, and its direction shows the direction of the quantity being represented. For example, a force of 100 newtons acting towards the north can be represented as an arrow pointing north with a length indicating a magnitude of 100 n. Adding vectors involves connecting them head to tail and finding the resultant, which is the vector that connects the initial point to the final point. In the car example, if you first travel 40 km per hour east and then 30 km per hour north, the resultant velocity vector would connect your starting point to your final position. Unit vectors are vectors with a magnitude of 1 and are used to represent directions. In three dimensions, the unit vectors are commonly represented as i, j, and k, corresponding to the x, y, and z axes, respectively. Vectors can be decomposed into components along different axes. This process is called vector resolution. By breaking down a vector into its components, you can analyze its behavior in specific directions. In physics, vectors play a crucial role in formulating laws and equations, making it easier to understand and predict the behavior of various physical systems. Whether describing motion, forces, electric fields, or any other physical phenomena, Vectors provide a powerful tool to capture the complexities of the world around us. Motion in two and three dimensions Motion in two and three dimensions refers to the movement of objects in both the horizontal and vertical planes, 2D, or in all three spatial directions, 3D. Unlike simple one-dimensional motion, where objects move along a straight line, motion in multiple dimensions involves more complex paths. In two dimensions, objects can move horizontally and vertically simultaneously. For instance, a projectile follows a parabolic path under the influence of gravity. This is crucial in various sports like basketball and soccer, where players must calculate trajectories to make successful shots or passes. Additionally, vehicles moving on curved roads also experience 2D motion. In three dimensions, objects can move in any direction, adding the depth component. Real-world scenarios involving 3D motion include flying airplanes, birds soaring through the sky, or spacecraft navigating through space. To describe such motion, we require three perpendicular axes, X, Y, and Z, to pinpoint an object's position accurately. Understanding motion in two and three dimensions has practical applications in various fields. In engineering, Designers analyze 2D and 3D motion to create structures that can withstand forces acting from different directions. In video games and simulations, developers model realistic movements to immerse players in virtual worlds. Vectors are essential tools in studying multidimensional motion. A vector represents both the magnitude and direction of a quantity, such as velocity or acceleration. For example, the velocity of an aircraft is not just a speed value but also includes its direction of travel. 
Projectile motion is a classic example of 2D motion, where an object launched into the air follows a curved trajectory due to gravity. This concept helps design accurate long-range artillery and study celestial bodies' motion. Understanding motion in multiple dimensions is crucial for fields like astrophysics, where celestial objects move in 3D space, and their trajectories must be predicted accurately. The study of planetary orbits and satellite motion are applications of 3D motion analysis in astronomy and space exploration. Overall, comprehending motion in two and three dimensions enhances our ability to interpret and predict the complex movements of objects in the world around us, leading to technological advancements and scientific breakthroughs. Force and Motion Force and motion are fundamental concepts in physics that describe the interactions between objects and their resulting movements. A force is a push or pull applied to an object, which can change its state of motion or deform its shape. Forces can be contact forces, like pushing a car, or non-contact forces, like the gravitational force that keeps us on the ground. Sir Isaac Newton formulated three laws of motion to explain the relationship between forces and motion. Newton's first law states that an object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. This is known as the law of inertia. The second law of motion describes how an object's acceleration depends on the net force acting on it and its mass. The formula is F equals MA, where F is the force, M is the mass, and A is the acceleration. This law helps us understand how much force is needed to move an object of a given mass. Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. When one object exerts a force on another, the second object exerts an equal force in the opposite direction. For example, when you jump off a diving board, the board pushes you up with the same force you exert on it. Friction is a force that opposes motion when two surfaces are in contact. It is the reason why we need to apply force to move objects on the ground. To reduce friction, lubricants are used between moving parts. Inertia is the property of an object to resist changes in its state of motion. Heavier objects have more inertia, making them harder to accelerate or decelerate. The force of gravity keeps us grounded on Earth, and determines the weight of an object. Weight is the force with which an object is pulled towards the center of the Earth due to gravity. Understanding force and motion is crucial for many real-world applications, from designing vehicles and buildings to space exploration. By applying these principles, we can explain the motion of planets, the flight of aircraft, and the behavior of everyday objects in our surroundings. Kinetic energy and work. Kinetic energy is the energy an object possesses due to its motion. When an object moves, it has the ability to do work and can transfer this energy to other objects. The amount of kinetic energy depends on both the mass and the speed of the object. An object with a larger mass or a higher speed will have more kinetic energy. For example, a speeding car has significantly more kinetic energy than a bicycle moving at the same speed due to its greater mass. Work, on the other hand, is the transfer of energy that occurs when a force is applied to an object, causing it to move over a distance. When a force acts on an object, and the object moves in the direction of the force, work is done. Work is directly related to the displacement of the object and the magnitude of the force applied. When work is done on an object, it gains energy, which can manifest as kinetic energy. The work energy principle establishes a connection between work and kinetic energy. It states that the network done on an object is equal to the change in its kinetic energy. When work is done on an object, it can accelerate, decelerate, or change direction, resulting in a change in its kinetic energy. If positive work is done, the object gains kinetic energy, while negative work, work done by the object, decreases its kinetic energy. Both kinetic energy and work are scalar quantities, meaning they have magnitude but no direction. They are measured in joules, J, 
in the International System of Units, SI. Understanding these concepts is crucial for comprehending the motion and energy transformations observed in various physical systems, from the motion of planets and vehicles to the behavior of particles at the atomic level. Potential Energy and Conservation of Energy Potential energy is a fundamental concept in physics, representing the energy an object possesses due to its position or configuration relative to other objects. It exists in various forms, such as gravitational potential energy, elastic potential energy, and chemical potential energy. Gravitational potential energy arises from an object's position above the Earth's surface. The higher the object is lifted, the more potential energy it gains. This energy can be converted into kinetic energy when the object falls, adhering to the law of conservation of energy. Elastic potential energy is stored in objects like springs and rubber bands when they are stretched or compressed. When released, this energy is converted into kinetic energy, causing the objects to move. Chemical potential energy is present in substances due to the arrangement of their atoms and molecules. When chemical reactions occur, this energy can be released or absorbed. The law of conservation of energy is a crucial principle in physics, stating that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed from one form to another. The total energy of a closed system remains constant over time. Therefore, the sum of potential and kinetic energy, as well as any other energy forms, remains unchanged. This principle finds widespread applications in various natural phenomena. For instance, when a roller coaster reaches its highest point, it possesses maximum potential energy, which is then converted into kinetic energy as it descends, providing the thrilling ride. In the context of planetary motion, the conservation of energy helps explain the stability of orbits. A satellite in orbit experiences a balance between kinetic and gravitational potential energy, allowing it to maintain a stable path around the planet. Conservation of energy also plays a role in environmental contexts. Renewable energy sources like hydroelectric power harness the potential energy of water at a higher elevation and convert it into electrical energy. Understanding potential energy and the conservation of energy is essential for comprehending the behavior of systems in the universe. It allows scientists and engineers to design efficient machines, analyze complex systems, and appreciate the elegance of nature's balance between different forms of energy. Center of Mass and Linear Momentum Center of Mass, the Center of Mass, COM, is a vital concept in physics used to describe the overall motion of an object or a system of objects. It represents the point where the mass of the system is concentrated and behaves as if all the mass were located at that single point. In a uniform gravitational field, the center of mass coincides with the center of gravity. The position of the center of mass depends on the distribution of mass within the object or system. For symmetrical objects like spheres or cubes, the center of mass is located at the geometric center. However, for irregularly shaped objects, the center of mass may be off-center, closer to the denser parts. The center of mass is particularly useful when analyzing collisions and motion of objects. During free motion, an object moves as if all its mass were concentrated at the center of mass, making it easier to study the overall motion without dealing with individual particles. Linear Momentum Linear momentum is a vector quantity that describes the motion of an object in terms of its mass and velocity. It represents the quantity of motion possessed by an object and is given by the product of an object's mass and its velocity. When no external forces act on an isolated system, the total linear momentum remains constant. This is known as the principle of conservation of momentum. In a collision between objects, the total momentum before the collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision. Linear momentum is particularly important in understanding interactions between objects. When two objects collide, their momentum can be transferred, leading to changes in their motion. For example, in a game of billiards, 
the momentum of the cue ball is transferred to other balls upon impact. Both center of mass and linear momentum play crucial roles in various areas of physics, such as mechanics, astrophysics, and even quantum mechanics. Understanding these concepts helps physicists predict and analyze the motion and interactions of objects, from macroscopic bodies to particles at the subatomic level, contributing to our understanding of the fundamental laws governing the universe. Rotation Rotation is a fundamental concept in physics that refers to the motion of an object around a fixed point or axis. Unlike linear motion, where an object moves in a straight line, rotation involves circular or curved paths. Think of a spinning top or a planet orbiting around the sun. These are examples of rotational motion. When an object rotates, different points on the object move in circles around the axis of rotation. Some points may move faster than others depending on their distance from the axis. Points farther from the axis have larger circular paths and, therefore, a higher linear speed. Angular velocity describes how quickly an object rotates around an axis. It is similar to linear velocity, but measured in terms of angles per unit of time. Objects with greater angular velocity rotate more rapidly. Angular momentum is another critical aspect of rotation. It is the rotational equivalent of linear momentum and depends on an object's mass, its distribution relative to the axis of rotation, and its angular velocity. According to the conservation of angular momentum, the total angular momentum of a closed system remains constant unless an external torque acts on it. The moment of inertia is a property that determines how much torque is required to change an object's rotational motion. Objects with larger moments of inertia are more resistant to changes in their rotation, making it harder to speed up or slow down their spinning. Rotational motion has several real-world applications. It plays a vital role in the functioning of machines, such as engines and turbines. It is also crucial in understanding the behavior of celestial bodies, from the rotation of planets to the formation of galaxies. Sometimes, rotational motion can result in interesting phenomena, like the conservation of angular momentum causing a spinning ice skater to accelerate their rotation by bringing in their arms. Understanding rotation helps scientists and engineers design efficient systems, study planetary motion, and explore the fascinating properties of rotating bodies in the universe. Rolling, Torque, and Angular Momentum Rolling is a type of motion where an object moves without sliding, maintaining contact with the surface it rolls on. Common examples include wheels rolling on the ground and balls rolling on a flat surface. Unlike sliding, rolling involves both translational and rotational motion, resulting in a smooth and energy-efficient movement. Torque is the rotational equivalent of force. It describes the tendency of a force to cause an object to rotate about an axis. The magnitude of torque depends on the force applied and the distance from the axis of rotation. When the torque acting on an object is zero, it remains in rotational equilibrium, meaning it maintains a constant rotational speed or remains at rest. Angular momentum is the measure of an object's rotational motion. It is the product of its moment of inertia, a measure of its resistance to rotation, and its angular velocity, how fast it rotates around an axis. According to the law of conservation of angular momentum, in the absence of external torques, the total angular momentum of a system remains constant. This means that if an object in motion changes its shape or distribution of mass, it will rotate faster or slower to conserve its angular momentum. When a wheel or a sphere rolls, it experiences both translational and rotational motion. The rolling motion is smoother and requires less friction compared to sliding, making it more efficient for various applications like transportation and machinery. Torque plays a crucial role in determining the rotational motion of objects. For instance, it's what allows you to open a door by applying force at its edge, creating a torque that overcomes the door's inertia and rotational equilibrium.
Angular momentum conservation is essential in various natural phenomena, such as the motion of celestial bodies. The conservation of angular momentum explains why ice skaters spin faster when they pull their arms closer to their bodies, reducing their moment of inertia. Understanding rolling, torque, and angular momentum is vital in fields like engineering, mechanics, and astrophysics, enabling us to predict and control the rotational behavior of objects and systems in our daily lives and beyond. Equilibrium and Elasticity Equilibrium refers to a state where an object is at rest or moving with constant velocity, meaning there is no net force acting on it. This concept is based on Newton's first law of motion, stating that an object will remain at rest or in uniform motion unless acted upon by an external force. In static equilibrium, the object is motionless, while in dynamic equilibrium, it moves at a constant velocity. Elasticity, on the other hand, deals with the deformation of materials when subjected to external forces. It describes a material's ability to return to its original shape after the force is removed. Hooke's law is a fundamental principle in elasticity, stating that the deformation of an elastic material is directly proportional to the applied force within its elastic limit. Beyond this limit, the material may undergo permanent deformation or even fracture. Materials can be classified based on their response to stress and strain. Brittle materials fracture easily without significant deformation, while ductile materials can undergo extensive plastic deformation before breaking. Materials with high elasticity, like rubber bands, can stretch considerably without losing their original shape. Elasticity also plays a crucial role in various engineering applications. For example, Buildings and bridges are designed to withstand forces and stresses caused by external loads like wind, earthquakes, and traffic. Understanding elasticity allows engineers to ensure structures remain intact and safe under normal conditions and during extreme events. Both equilibrium and elasticity are vital in understanding the behavior of complex systems, such as the Earth's crust during tectonic movements, or the stability of objects subjected to external forces in daily life. By studying these concepts, scientists and engineers can design better materials, structures, and technologies, making our world more secure and efficient. Gravitation Gravitation is the fundamental force of attraction between objects with mass. It is responsible for the natural phenomenon that keeps us grounded on Earth and governs the motion of celestial bodies in the universe. Sir Isaac Newton first formulated the law of universal gravitation in the 17th century. According to Newton's law, every object in the universe attracts every other object with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. This means that larger objects have a stronger gravitational pull and the force weakens as the distance between objects increases. Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity, developed in the early 20th century, revolutionized our understanding of gravitation. Instead of a force acting at a distance, Einstein proposed that massive objects warp the fabric of space-time around them. This curvature causes other objects to move on curved paths, which we perceive as gravitational attraction. Gravitation has many important consequences. On Earth, it keeps us and everything else anchored to its surface, preventing us from floating away. The moon's gravitational pull causes the ocean tides on our planet. In the cosmos, gravity governs the motion of planets, moons, stars, galaxies, and even entire galaxy clusters. Black holes are fascinating examples of extreme gravitational effects. They form when massive stars collapse under their gravity, creating a region in space where the gravitational pull is so intense that nothing, not even light, can escape from it. Gravitational waves are another exciting prediction of general relativity. These ripples in spacetime can occur when massive objects accelerate or merge, and they were directly observed for the first time in 2015. Gravitation is an essential force that shapes the universe on both the grandest and smallest scales. 
It plays a crucial role in our understanding of astronomy, cosmology, and the behavior of matter and energy. By unraveling the mysteries of gravitation, scientists continue to deepen our knowledge of the cosmos and its incredible mechanisms. Fluids Fluids are a fundamental part of our everyday lives and encompass both liquids and gases. They exhibit unique properties that differentiate them from solids, making them essential in various aspects of science and engineering. One defining characteristic of fluids is their ability to flow and take the shape of their containers. Liquids, like water and oil, have fixed volumes but can flow freely, whereas gases, such as air, can expand to fill any available space. This flow behavior is a result of weak intermolecular forces that allow fluid particles to move past one another easily. Fluid dynamics studies how fluids behave when in motion. The principles of fluid dynamics govern phenomena like aerodynamics, which explains how airplanes lift off, and hydrodynamics, which examines the motion of water in rivers or the ocean. Bernoulli's principle is a fundamental concept in fluid dynamics, stating that as the speed of a fluid increases, its pressure decreases. This principle helps explain how planes can stay aloft and how wind can affect buildings. Viscosity is another critical property of fluids, determining their resistance to flow. Honey, for example, has a higher viscosity than water, which is why it flows more slowly. Viscosity plays a role in fluid mechanics from the movement of blood through our veins to the lubrication of car engines. Archimedes' principle describes the buoyant force acting on an object submerged in a fluid. It explains why ships can float and why objects appear lighter in water. Fluids are integral in various technologies, including hydraulics and pneumatics. Hydraulics use pressurized liquids to transmit power, enabling heavy machinery and vehicle brakes to function effectively. Pneumatics employ compressed air to transmit power and operate tools like jackhammers. Understanding fluid behavior is crucial in weather forecasting and climate science. The movement of air masses and ocean currents greatly influences weather patterns and climate shifts. Fluids have shaped our understanding of the natural world, from explaining the formation of raindrops to the flow of blood through our bodies. The study of fluid dynamics continues to drive innovation and provide essential insights across numerous scientific disciplines. Oscillations Oscillations refer to repetitive, back-and-forth movements or fluctuations around a central equilibrium point. They are fundamental phenomena present in various aspects of physics and everyday life. One of the most common examples is a simple pendulum, where a mass swings back and forth under the influence of gravity. Oscillations occur in many different systems, such as mechanical systems, electrical circuits, and even in waves like sound and light. In mechanical systems, objects like springs or masses attached to springs can exhibit oscillatory behavior. When displaced from their equilibrium position, they experience a restoring force that brings them back and sets up a repetitive motion. In electrical circuits, capacitors and inductors can store energy and discharge it in a cyclical manner, leading to oscillations in current or voltage. These oscillations are crucial in technologies like radios, where electromagnetic waves carry information. Natural occurrences, such as heartbeats, are also a form of oscillation. The heart contracts and relaxes rhythmically, maintaining a stable cycle to pump blood throughout the body. Oscillations often have a characteristic frequency, which determines how fast the system repeats its motion. Factors like mass, stiffness, and damping influence this frequency. Damping refers to the dissipation of energy, causing the oscillations to decrease over time. Resonance is another fascinating aspect of oscillations. When an external force matches the natural frequency of a system, resonance occurs, leading to amplified oscillations. This phenomenon has both positive and negative effects. While musical instruments produce harmonious sounds due to resonance, it can also lead to catastrophic consequences if not controlled, e.g., the Tacoma Narrows Bridge Collapse.
Oscillations are not limited to physical objects. They can also occur in the quantum world. Particles, like electrons, can behave as waves and undergo oscillatory behavior, leading to quantum phenomena. Understanding oscillations is crucial in various scientific and engineering fields. It allows us to design and analyze systems, predict behavior, and develop advanced technologies like atomic clocks, lasers, and communication systems. Moreover, oscillatory patterns are found throughout nature, unveiling a fascinating glimpse into the interconnectedness and rhythmic beauty of the universe. Waves Waves are a fundamental concept in physics, encompassing a wide range of phenomena. They are disturbances that propagate through a medium or space, carrying energy without the overall displacement of matter. One common example is water waves, where the water moves up and down as the energy travels across the surface. However, waves are not limited to just water. They exist in various forms. Mechanical waves require a medium to travel through, like sound waves, which travel through air or other materials. When you speak, sound waves are created, causing vibrations that reach our ears, allowing us to hear. Another example is seismic waves, generated by earthquakes, which travel through the Earth's interior, allowing scientists to study the planet's structure. Electromagnetic waves, on the other hand, can travel through a vacuum, meaning they don't require a medium. These include radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma rays. They all have different wavelengths and energies, with visible light being the range our eyes can detect. Waves can be characterized by their amplitude, wavelength, frequency, and speed. The amplitude is the maximum displacement of the wave, while the wavelength is the distance between two consecutive points in phase. Frequency refers to the number of oscillations per unit time, usually measured in hertz hz. The speed of a wave depends on the properties of the medium it travels through. Wave phenomena like interference and diffraction showcase their ability to interact with one another. When waves overlap, they can either reinforce, constructive interference, or cancel out, destructive interference, leading to complex patterns. Diffraction occurs when waves encounter obstacles or openings, causing them to bend and spread. Applications of waves are numerous and crucial in modern technology. Telecommunication relies on radio waves, while microwaves are used for cooking and satellite communication. X-rays aid in medical imaging, and lasers exploit the properties of light waves for diverse purposes, from reading discs to precise cutting and welding. Understanding waves is crucial in various scientific fields and daily life, providing insights into sound, light, communication, and natural phenomena. Their versatility and impact have shaped our world in countless ways. Temperature, heat, and the first law of thermodynamics. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of particles in a substance. When the particles move faster, the substance's temperature rises, and when they slow down, the temperature drops. The Kelvin scale is often used in scientific contexts, where absolute zero, zero K, represents the complete absence of thermal energy. Heat, on the other hand, is the transfer of energy between two objects or systems due to a temperature difference. It flows from the object with higher temperature to the one with lower temperature until thermal equilibrium is reached. Heat transfer occurs through three main mechanisms, conduction, direct contact, convection, through fluid movement, and radiation, emission of electromagnetic waves. The first law of thermodynamics, also known as the law of energy conservation, states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but only transferred or transformed from one form to another. In simple terms, the total energy of an isolated system remains constant. When heat is added to a system, it increases its internal energy, causing a rise in temperature or leading to work done by the system. This law has numerous applications, including engines and refrigerators. In an engine, like a car engine, fuel is burned and the heat produced is transformed into useful work, such as moving the vehicle. In a refrigerator, heat is extracted from the interior to keep it cool, 
following the same principle in reverse. Understanding temperature, heat, and the first law of thermodynamics is essential for various scientific and engineering fields. It allows us to design efficient systems, predict energy transfers, and analyze complex processes in the natural world. These concepts lay the foundation for further exploration in thermodynamics and its applications across different industries. As we continue to advance technologically and explore the universe, the principles of temperature, heat, and energy conservation remain steadfast in shaping our understanding of the physical world. The Kinetic Theory of Gases the kinetic theory of gases is a fundamental model used to explain the behavior of gases at the molecular level. It is based on a few key assumptions that provide valuable insights into gas properties and phenomena. The theory posits that gases consist of a vast number of tiny particles, such as atoms or molecules, in constant motion. Firstly, it suggests that gas particles are in rapid, random motion, colliding with each other in the walls of their container. These collisions are elastic, meaning that no energy is lost during the interactions, only transferred between particles. Secondly, the theory assumes that the volume occupied by gas particles is negligibly small compared to the total volume of the gas. Essentially, the particles themselves are considered as points with no significant volume. Thirdly, the particles do not experience any attractive or repulsive forces except during collisions. This means that the gas particles are considered to be free from intermolecular forces, except when they collide and exert pressure on the container walls. Fourthly, the average kinetic energy of the gas particles is directly proportional to the absolute temperature of the gas. As the temperature increases, the average kinetic energy of the gas particles increases as well. The kinetic theory provides a basis for understanding various gas properties, such as pressure, volume, and temperature. For instance, when gas is heated, its particles gain kinetic energy, move faster, and collide more frequently with the container walls, leading to an increase in pressure. Additionally, the kinetic theory helps explain the relationship between temperature and the speed of gas particles. As temperature rises, the particles move faster, causing an increase in pressure unless the volume or the number of particles changes. The kinetic theory of gases has significant practical applications and is used in various fields, from engineering to atmospheric sciences. It plays a crucial role in understanding gas behavior in everyday scenarios, such as the ideal gas law, gas diffusion, and the behavior of gases in various industrial processes. Entropy and the Second Law of Thermodynamics Entropy is a fundamental concept in thermodynamics that quantifies the level of disorder or randomness in a system. The Second Law of Thermodynamics states that the total entropy of an isolated system will always tend to increase over time. In simpler terms, natural processes lead to an increase in disorder. Imagine a deck of cards perfectly ordered in a sequence. Shuffling the cards randomly would create a disordered arrangement, and it is highly unlikely that shuffling them again would restore the original order. This increasing randomness illustrates the essence of entropy. In the macroscopic world, processes are not typically reversible. For example, when a hot cup of coffee is left in a cold room, heat will spontaneously transfer from the coffee to the surrounding air until both reach the same temperature. However, it is highly improbable for the heat to spontaneously move back into the coffee, returning it to its original hot state. This tendency towards greater disorder represents an increase in entropy. The concept of entropy is closely linked to energy dispersal. Energy tends to spread out and become more evenly distributed in a system. For example, a concentrated chemical gradient will naturally diffuse until the concentrations are uniform throughout the system increasing entropy. The second law of thermodynamics also implies that certain processes, like the conversion of heat into work in a heat engine, are not perfectly efficient. Some energy is always lost as waste heat, leading to an overall increase in entropy. Entropy plays a crucial role in various aspects of life and the universe. 
It governs chemical reactions, explaining why some reactions release energy, exergonic, and others require energy input, endergonic. In biological systems, living organisms maintain order within themselves, but do so at the expense of increasing entropy in their surroundings. The concept of entropy and the second law have significant implications for the fate of the universe. It suggests that over time, the universe as a whole will approach a state of maximum entropy, known as heat death, where all energy is uniformly distributed and no useful work can be extracted. Understanding entropy and the second law of thermodynamics helps us comprehend the fundamental behavior of physical systems and the ever-present drive towards disorder and equilibrium in the universe. Coulomb's Law Coulomb's Law is a fundamental principle in physics that describes the interaction between electric charges. Proposed by French physicist Charles Augustin de Coulomb in the 18th century, this law plays a crucial role in understanding the behavior of electrically charged particles. The law states that the force between two point charges is directly proportional to the product of their magnitudes and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. In simpler terms, the greater the charges, the stronger the force, and the farther apart they are, the weaker the force. Consider two charges one positive and the other negative. Similar charges repel each other, while opposite charges attract. The force is attractive when one charge is positive and the other negative, and repulsive when both charges have the same sign. This force weakens rapidly as the charges move away from each other. The law's implications extend to larger systems of charges. When multiple charges are present, the total force on a charge is the vector sum of the individual forces due to each charge. This principle allows us to analyze complex electric fields generated by multiple charges. Coulomb's law is vital in various real-world applications. It underpins the functioning of electronic devices, from basic circuits to advanced technology. It helps us understand the behavior of charged particles in atoms and molecules, guiding the study of chemistry and material science. Furthermore, it is crucial in the development of electromagnets, used in motors, generators, and MRI machines. The law also connects to the concept of electric potential energy. As two charges move closer or farther apart, their potential energy changes. This relationship is essential in understanding energy transfer in electrical systems. Coulomb's Law along with the other fundamental laws of electromagnetism, has been extensively verified through experiments and observations, providing a solid foundation for the study of electricity and magnetism. Its simplicity and applicability make it one of the cornerstones of classical physics, enabling scientists and engineers to comprehend and manipulate electrical phenomena in the world around us. Electric Fields Electric fields are a fundamental concept in physics that describe the region around an electrically charged object where its influence can be felt on other charged particles. These fields are invisible, but their effects are evident through the interactions they produce. Electric fields are created by electric charges, either positive or negative, and their strength is determined by the charge's magnitude. Like charges repel each other, while opposite charges attract. Imagine a positive charge at the center of an empty room. It generates an electric field that extends outward in all directions. The strength of this field weakens as you move farther away from the charge. The concept of electric field lines helps visualize these fields. For a positive charge, the lines extend radially outward, and for a negative charge, they point inward. The magnitude of the electric field is measured in volts per meter, V slash M. The field's direction at any point is the direction a positive test charge would move if placed in the field. These fields exert forces on other charged particles within their influence. A positive test charge placed in a positive electric field would experience a repulsive force, while in a negative field, it would experience an attractive force. Electric fields play a crucial role in various everyday phenomena. For instance, they enable the operation of electrical appliances. When you plug in an electronic device, the electric field in the power cord allows the flow of electric charges, 
providing the device with the necessary electrical energy to function. Electric fields also have implications in lightning formation, as they separate positive and negative charges in thunderclouds. Moreover, they are essential in electronics, where they guide electrons through circuits, making devices like computers and smartphones possible. Electric fields can also induce magnetic fields and vice versa, leading to the intricate interplay of electromagnetism. This relationship is fundamental in generators and motors, where electricity and mechanical energy are efficiently converted between each other. Understanding electric fields is vital for modern technology and provides the foundation for more advanced concepts like electromagnetic waves, which underpin wireless communication and much of our modern way of life. Gauss Law Gauss Law, a fundamental principle in physics, relates to the electric flux through a closed surface surrounding an electric charge. It was formulated by Carl Friedrich Gauss, a German mathematician and physicist, and is a key concept in electrostatics, one of the fundamental branches of electromagnetism. Gauss law states that the electric flux passing through a closed surface surrounding a charge is directly proportional to the total charge enclosed by that surface. In simpler terms, it means that the total number of electric field lines originating from positive charges or terminating on negative charges inside the closed surface is proportional to the total charge contained within. The law provides a powerful tool to calculate the electric field created by various charge distributions, such as point charges, charged spheres, or more complex configurations. By choosing appropriate Gaussian surfaces, which are imaginary closed surfaces, the electric field calculation becomes more straightforward. For example, for a point charge at the center of a sphere, the electric field lines are radially symmetric, and the Gaussian surface can be chosen as a spherical surface. Gauss law then allows us to derive a formula that directly relates the electric field at any point outside the sphere to the total charge within the sphere. Gauss law is also valuable in understanding the concept of electric field divergence. If the net electric flux through a closed surface is non-zero, it indicates the presence of a charge enclosed within that surface. On the other hand, if the net flux is zero, it suggests that there are no charges inside the closed surface. Overall, Gauss law is a fundamental principle that significantly simplifies the calculation of electric fields by providing a direct link between the electric flux and the charge distribution. Its applications extend beyond electrostatics, finding relevance in magnetism through Gauss law for magnetism, a similar concept for magnetic fields. Understanding Gauss law is vital in comprehending the behavior of electric charges and fields, contributing to various practical applications and technological advancements in modern society. Electric potential Electric potential refers to the electric potential energy per unit charge at a point in an electric field. It is a fundamental concept in physics that helps us understand how electric charges interact with each other and their surroundings. Imagine electric potential as a map that describes the height of the electric field at various points. The electric potential at a point depends on the magnitude and distribution of electric charges around it. Similar to how an object gains potential energy when raised in a gravitational field, positive charges experience higher electric potential when moved closer to other positive charges. Conversely, Positive charges experience lower electric potential when moved away from other positive charges or closer to negative charges. The unit of electric potential is the volt, V. A positive electric potential means a positive charge would experience a repulsive force if placed at that point, while a negative electric potential implies an attractive force for a positive charge. Electric potential plays a crucial role in understanding circuits and electrical devices. When a voltage difference exists between two points in a circuit, electric charges flow from the higher potential to the lower potential, creating an electric current. This phenomenon allows us to power electronic devices, light up our homes, and run various electrical appliances. Additionally, electric potential is associated with capacitors. These devices store electric potential energy, which can be later released when needed. 
Capacitors find applications in a wide range of technologies, including energy storage systems, camera flashes, and electronic filters. One of the fundamental principles in physics is the conservation of energy. Electric potential energy obeys this law as well. For example, if a positive charge moves in an electric field, its electric potential energy can be converted into kinetic energy, such as in the case of charged particles accelerating and particle accelerators. Overall, electric potential is a fundamental concept that underpins various aspects of electricity and electromagnetism. Understanding electric potential helps us design and analyze electrical circuits, study the behavior of charged particles in different fields, and develop numerous technologies that have become essential in our modern lives. Capacitance Capacitance is a fundamental concept in physics that describes the ability of an object to store electrical charge. It is measured in farads, F, named after the scientist Michael Faraday. Capacitors are devices designed to hold charge and consist of two conductive plates separated by a non-conductive material called a dielectric. When a voltage is applied across the plates, electrons accumulate on one plate, creating a surplus of negative charge while the other plate experiences a deficit, resulting in a positive charge. The dielectric between the plates plays a crucial role in capacitance by reducing the electric field between the plates and enhancing the charge storage capacity. Different factors affect capacitance, including the size and shape of the plates, the distance between them, and the properties of the dielectric material. Larger plates and smaller separation yield higher capacitance. Common dielectrics include air, paper, and certain types of ceramics. Capacitance has numerous practical applications. In electronic circuits, capacitors are utilized for energy storage, filtering, and coupling. They are vital components in power supplies, smoothing voltage fluctuations, and helping devices start up quickly. In radio frequency systems, capacitors tune circuits to specific frequencies. The concept of capacitance also extends to biological systems. Cell membranes act as capacitors, maintaining a potential difference across the membrane necessary for nerve impulses and muscle contractions. In parallel and series connections, capacitance combines similarly to resistances in circuits. In parallel, Capacitances add up, resulting in a higher total capacitance, while in series, the reciprocal of the total capacitance equals the sum of the reciprocals of the individual capacitances. Capacitance is a fundamental aspect of many natural phenomena and technological advancements. Understanding capacitance allows engineers and physicists to design intricate electrical systems, while its role in living organisms sheds light on the complexities of biological processes. From basic electronic gadgets to complex scientific instruments, capacitance plays a crucial role in our modern world. Current and resistance Current and resistance are fundamental concepts in physics related to the flow of electric charge in a circuit. Current refers to the movement of electric charges, such as electrons, through a conductor like a wire. It is measured in amperes, A. When a voltage source, like a battery, is connected to a circuit, it creates an electric potential difference, causing charges to flow from the higher potential, positive terminal, to the lower potential, negative terminal, thus establishing a current. Resistance, measured in ohms, ohm symbol, is a property of the material that opposes the flow of current. It is caused by collisions between the moving charges and the atoms in the conductor. Materials with high resistance impede the flow of current more effectively than those with low resistance. The relationship between voltage, current, and resistance is described by Ohm's law, which states that current is directly proportional to voltage and inversely proportional to resistance. Some materials, like metals, have low resistance and are good conductors of electricity, while others, like rubber or glass, have high resistance and are insulators. Resistors, which are components designed to have a specific resistance value, are used in circuits to control the flow of current and protect sensitive components. Electricity encounters more resistance in longer wires compared to shorter ones, so the cross-sectional area of the wire also affects resistance. 
Thicker wires have lower resistance, providing an easier path for current to flow. Additionally, temperature can impact resistance. As the temperature of a conductor increases, its resistance typically increases as well. Resistance can be useful, such as in heating elements, where the resistance generates heat, or in light bulbs, where it produces light. However, in some cases, resistance can be undesirable, leading to energy loss and heat dissipation in power lines or electronic devices. Understanding current and resistance is crucial in designing and analyzing electrical circuits, enabling engineers to optimize the performance and efficiency of various electronic systems and devices in our everyday lives. Circuits Circuits are fundamental components in the field of physics, used to transmit and control electrical energy. They are networks of interconnected devices that enable the flow of electric charges. Two essential elements of a circuit are voltage sources, like batteries and conductive pathways, typically made of metal wires. Circuits come in two main types, series and parallel. In a series circuit, components are connected end-to-end, -end, forming a single pathway for current flow. If one component fails, the entire circuit breaks. In contrast, a parallel circuit features multiple branches, with each component connected separately. If one component fails, the others can still function. Resistors are components designed to limit the current in a circuit. They dissipate energy in the form of heat and are used for various purposes, such as protecting sensitive components or controlling the brightness of light bulbs. Capacitors store electric charge temporarily and release it when needed. They can act as short-term energy reservoirs, smoothing voltage fluctuations, and supporting various electronic functions. Inductors, on the other hand, store energy in magnetic fields when current flows through them. They resist changes in current, playing an essential role in transformers and electrical motors. Diodes allow current to flow in one direction only. This property makes them valuable for converting AC to DC in rectifiers and protecting circuits from reverse current. Transistors act as electronic switches, enabling the control of current flow based on small input signals. They are the building blocks of modern electronic devices, like computers and smartphones. Integrated circuits, ICs, are compact assemblies of multiple electronic components embedded on a small chip. These miniaturized circuits revolutionized electronics, leading to the development of powerful computers and devices. Circuits can be used in countless applications, from simple household appliances to complex space missions. Understanding circuits is vital for engineers, scientists, and anyone dealing with electronics, as they form the backbone of modern technology. Whether it's charging your phone, powering a spacecraft, or lighting up your home, Circuits are at the heart of our interconnected, electrified world. Magnetic fields Magnetic fields are a fundamental aspect of physics that surround magnets and electric currents. They exert a force on other magnets and electrically charged particles, leading to various phenomena and applications in our daily lives. At the core of magnetic fields lies the concept of magnetism which originates from the movement of charged particles. When charged particles, such as electrons, move, they generate a magnetic field. This movement can occur within atoms, as seen in the electrons orbiting the nucleus, or on a larger scale, like in electric currents flowing through conductors. Magnetic fields have both magnitude and direction, represented by field lines. These lines form closed loops around the magnetic source, either a magnet or a current-carrying conductor. The field lines are closer together where the magnetic field is stronger and farther apart where it is weaker. One of the most intriguing aspects of magnetic fields is their interaction with each other. Opposite poles of magnets attract each other, while similar poles repel. This attraction and repulsion are the basis for various applications, such as in motors, generators, and magnetic levitation systems. Magnetic fields also play a crucial role in Earth's protection. The Earth has its own magnetic field generated by the motion of molten iron in its outer core. This magnetic field, often called the geomagnetic field, 
shields our planet from harmful solar radiation and cosmic particles. Moreover, magnetic fields are integral to electromagnetism, one of the four fundamental forces in nature. By using electromagnets, which are essentially coils of wire with an electric current flowing through them, we can create controlled and powerful magnetic fields, enabling applications in medical devices like MRI machines, speakers, and particle accelerators. Understanding magnetic fields has been essential for advancing technology and scientific knowledge. The study of magnetism and electromagnetism has led to a deeper comprehension of the universe's workings and has paved the way for countless technological innovations that continue to shape our world. Magnetic Fields Due to Currents Magnetic fields due to currents are a fundamental aspect of electromagnetism. When electric currents flow through a conductor, they create magnetic fields in the surrounding space. This phenomenon was first discovered by Hans Christian Ersted in 1820. The strength of the magnetic field is directly proportional to the magnitude of the current. The direction of the magnetic field follows the right-hand rule. If you imagine grasping the conductor with your right hand, with your thumb pointing in the direction of the current, your fingers will curl in the direction of the magnetic field. The shape of the magnetic field lines around a straight current-carrying conductor resembles concentric circles, with the conductor at the center. The magnetic field strength weakens as you move further away from the conductor. In the case of a coiled conductor, such as a solenoid, the magnetic field lines are more concentrated inside the coil, and the field resembles that of a bar magnet. The strength of the magnetic field inside the solenoid increases with the number of turns and the current flowing through it. When multiple conductors with currents are present, their magnetic fields interact. If the currents flow in the same direction, the magnetic fields add up, resulting in a stronger combined field. Conversely, if the currents flow in opposite directions, the magnetic fields can cancel each other out in certain regions. These magnetic fields, due to currents, have numerous practical applications. They form the basis of electromagnets used in various devices, from electric motors and generators to MRI machines and speakers. Moreover, Magnetic fields due to currents are crucial in transmitting electricity over long distances through power lines efficiently. Understanding magnetic fields due to currents is essential in many scientific and engineering fields. It allows us to design and optimize electrical systems, develop new technologies, and unravel the mysteries of the cosmos through studies of celestial magnetic fields. As our knowledge of electromagnetism advances, so does our ability to harness this force for the benefit of humanity. Induction and Inductance Induction and inductance are fundamental concepts in physics related to the behavior of electric and magnetic fields. Induction refers to the process of generating an electromotive force, EMF, or voltage in a circuit due to changes in the magnetic flux through the circuit. This phenomenon was first discovered by Michael Faraday in the 19th century. When a magnetic field passing through a coil or a closed loop of wire changes, it induces an EMF in the wire, resulting in an electric current. This is known as electromagnetic induction. The magnitude of the induced voltage depends on the rate of change of the magnetic flux and the number of turns in the coil. This principle is the basis for many devices, such as transformers, generators, and induction cooktops. Inductance, on the other hand, is a property of an electrical circuit that opposes changes in current. It is a measure of the ability of a circuit to store energy in the form of a magnetic field when a current flows through it. Inductance is denoted by the symbol L and is measured in Henry's H. When the current through an inductor changes, it induces a voltage across the inductor that acts to counteract the change in current. Inductors are passive components commonly used in electronic circuits. They consist of a coil of wire wound around a core made of magnetic material. Inductors can store energy temporarily and release it back into the circuit when the current changes, which can help stabilize voltage levels and filter out certain frequencies. The behavior of induction and inductance is crucial in the functioning of many electronic devices and power systems. 
Transformers utilize mutual induction to change the voltage levels in AC power transmission and distribution. Inductive components are also present in filters and oscillators in communication systems. Understanding induction and inductance is essential in various fields of physics and engineering as they play a pivotal role in electromagnetism and the design of electrical circuits and devices. By grasping these concepts, scientists and engineers can develop more efficient and sophisticated electrical and electronic systems that power modern technology. Electromagnetic Oscillations and Alternating Current Electromagnetic oscillations and alternating current are fundamental concepts in physics that play a crucial role in various applications. Electromagnetic oscillations refer to the periodic back-and-forth motion of electric and magnetic fields. These oscillations are essential in the generation and transmission of alternating current, AC. AC is an electric current that reverses direction periodically, typically in a sinusoidal manner. This periodic reversal is what distinguishes AC from direct current, DC, which flows in a single direction. AC is widely used in power distribution due to its ability to be easily transformed to different voltages using transformers, making long-distance transmission efficient. The phenomenon of electromagnetic oscillations is the foundation of AC generation. When a conductor, like a loop of wire, is subjected to a changing magnetic field, it induces a voltage, resulting in an alternating current. This process is employed in power stations, where mechanical energy, often from turbines, drives large generators to produce AC. The voltage and current in an AC circuit oscillate sinusoidally, completing a cycle in a specific time period, frequency. The frequency is measured in Hertz Hz, representing the number of cycles per second. The standard frequency for most power systems is 50 or 60 Hz, depending on the region. AC's ability to be easily converted to different voltages using transformers enables efficient distribution and minimizes power loss over long distances. At the destination, the voltage is transformed back to lower levels suitable for household or industrial use. The behavior of AC circuits is different from DC circuits due to their time-varying nature. Components like capacitors and inductors exhibit unique behavior in AC circuits, influencing factors like phase relationships and impedance. AC circuits also display resonance phenomena, where the energy transfer between the electric and magnetic fields reaches its maximum efficiency. Understanding electromagnetic oscillations and AC is vital for designing electrical systems, motors, transformers, and numerous electronic devices we use daily. From power generation to modern technology, AC's versatility and efficient distribution make it an indispensable part of our lives. Maxwell's Equations – Magnetism of Matter Maxwell's equations form a set of fundamental principles in electromagnetism, describing the relationship between electric and magnetic fields and their sources. They were formulated by the Scottish physicist James Clerk Maxwell in the 19th century and played a crucial role in the unification of electricity and magnetism. There are four Maxwell's equations. Gauss's Law for Electricity it states that the electric flux through a closed surface is proportional to the total charge enclosed within the surface. In simple terms, it describes how electric charges create electric fields. Gauss's Law for Magnetism Unlike electric monopoles, magnetic monopoles don't exist, so this law states that the magnetic field lines are always closed loops, with no magnetic source or sink points. Faraday's Law of Electromagnetic Induction It states that a changing magnetic field induces an electric field. This phenomenon is the basis for generating electricity in power plants and the functioning of electrical transformers. Ampere's Law with Maxwell's Addition It originally stated that a current-carrying wire generates a magnetic field. Maxwell extended it by introducing the concept of displacement current which accounts for the changing electric field's contribution to the magnetic field. Magnetism of matter refers to the magnetic properties exhibited by certain materials. 
Materials can be classified as diamagnetic, paramagnetic, or ferromagnetic. Diamagnetic materials weakly repel magnetic fields, paramagnetic materials weakly attract magnetic fields, and ferromagnetic materials are strongly attracted and can become permanently magnetized. In ferromagnetic materials, such as iron, nickel, and cobalt, the magnetic moments of individual atoms align to create strong, spontaneous magnetization. When an external magnetic field is applied, these materials retain their magnetic properties even after the field is removed. Understanding Maxwell's equations and the magnetism of matter has been essential for technological advancements. From the development of motors, generators, and transformers to the design of modern communication devices like radios and cell phones, electromagnetism plays a central role in many aspects of our daily lives. These fundamental principles continue to inspire research and innovation, paving the way for new technologies and a deeper understanding of the natural world. Electromagnetic Waves Electromagnetic waves are a fundamental aspect of physics, encompassing a wide range of phenomena from radio waves to visible light and beyond. They are a form of energy transmission that does not require a medium, as they can travel through a vacuum unlike mechanical waves. Electromagnetic waves consist of electric and magnetic fields oscillating perpendicular to each other and the direction of propagation. The spectrum of electromagnetic waves spans a broad range of frequencies and wavelengths. At the lower end, we have radio waves, which are used for communication and broadcasting. Slightly higher in frequency are microwaves, commonly employed in cooking and communication technologies like cell phones and Wi-Fi. Moving up the spectrum, we encounter infrared radiation, responsible for the warmth we feel from the sun and the night vision capabilities of certain devices. Visible light is the part of the spectrum detectable by the human eye, appearing as a range of colors. Ultraviolet rays come next, which can cause sunburn and are utilized in germicidal lamps. Beyond visible light, there are X-rays, utilized in medical imaging due to their ability to pass through soft tissues but not bones, and gamma rays, high-energy rays emitted by nuclear reactions and radioactive decay. Electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light, denoted as C in equations. This speed is approximately 299,792 kilometers per second in a vacuum. When electromagnetic waves interact with matter, they can be absorbed reflected, or transmitted. These interactions are fundamental to how we perceive the world around us, as they dictate the colors we see and the way objects appear. The understanding of electromagnetic waves has led to countless technological advancements, from wireless communication to medical imaging devices and more. Scientists and engineers continue to explore the properties and applications of electromagnetic waves, pushing the boundaries of our knowledge and technological capabilities. The study of these waves not only enhances our understanding of the universe, but also drives innovation that shapes the modern world. Images Images are visual representations of objects, scenes, or concepts. They play a crucial role in our understanding of the world and are an integral part of human perception. Images are captured using various devices like cameras and generated through digital means. They can be photographs, drawings, paintings, or computer-generated graphics. The formation of an image depends on how light interacts with objects and the process of perception by the human visual system. When light from an object enters our eyes, it passes through the cornea and lens, forming an inverted image on the retina. The retina contains photoreceptor cells, which convert light into electrical signals that are sent to the brain via the optic nerve. The brain then processes these signals, allowing us to perceive and interpret the visual information. Images can evoke emotions, convey information, and communicate ideas without the need for words. They are widely used in art, media, science, and everyday life. In art, images express the artist's creativity, emotions, and perspectives. In media, images are used to tell stories, deliver news, and entertain audiences. In science, images from telescopes, microscopes, 
and other instruments help researchers observe and understand the natural world. Digital images are made up of individual picture elements or pixels, each assigned a specific color or grayscale value. Higher pixel density contributes to clearer and more detailed images. Image formats like JPEG, PNG, and GIF are used to store and display digital images on various devices and platforms. Image processing techniques are employed to enhance, analyze, and manipulate images. These techniques help in tasks like image restoration, object recognition, and medical imaging. Additionally, image editing software enables users to adjust colors, apply filters, and crop or combine images. Images are a powerful means of communication, conveying complex information in a visually appealing and accessible way. Whether in advertisements, educational materials, or scientific research, images play a vital role in enhancing our understanding of the world around us. Their ubiquity in modern society highlights their significance in shaping our perception and knowledge of various subjects. Interference Interference in physics is a phenomenon that occurs when two or more waves meet and combine with each other. It can happen with various types of waves, such as light, sound, water, or electromagnetic waves. When waves overlap, they temporarily merge, resulting in constructive or destructive interference. Constructive interference occurs when the peaks of two waves align, or the troughs of two waves align, enhancing the amplitude of the resulting wave. This leads to a reinforcement of the wave, making it stronger and more intense than the individual waves. On the other hand, destructive interference occurs when the peaks of one wave align with the troughs of another wave. In this case, the two waves cancel each other out, reducing the overall amplitude and resulting in a weaker wave or even complete cancellation in extreme cases. Interference plays a fundamental role in various natural phenomena and practical applications. In optics, it gives rise to colorful patterns in thin films, diffraction gratings, and interference filters. In audio, interference can lead to sound cancellation or reinforcement, which is used in noise-canceling headphones and concert hall design. One of the most famous interference experiments is the double-slit experiment which demonstrates the wave-like behavior of particles, such as electrons and photons. When these particles pass through two slits and then hit a screen, they create an interference pattern, suggesting their wave-like nature. Interference also finds applications in technology, particularly in radio communication. Radio receivers use antennas and radio waves, constructive interference to improve signal reception. Similarly, Radar systems use interference patterns to detect the location and speed of objects. Understanding interference is crucial for various scientific fields and technologies. It allows us to harness the wave nature of particles and waves and exploit the phenomena for practical purposes. By manipulating interference patterns, scientists and engineers can design new devices, improve existing technologies, and gain deeper insights into the fundamental principles of the universe. Diffraction Diffraction is a fundamental wave phenomenon that occurs when waves encounter an obstacle or aperture in their path, causing them to bend or spread out. This behavior is observed in various wave types, such as light, sound, and water waves. When waves encounter an obstacle with a size comparable to their wavelength, diffraction becomes significant. In the case of light, when it passes through a narrow slit or encounters the edge of an object, it bends around the corners, creating a pattern of alternating dark and light regions known as a diffraction pattern. This phenomenon was instrumental in understanding the wave nature of light and played a crucial role in the development of quantum mechanics. Similarly, sound waves can also exhibit diffraction effects. For example, when you hear someone's voice from around a corner, Sound waves diffract around the obstacle and reach your ears, allowing you to perceive the sound even when the direct line of sight is blocked. Water waves demonstrate diffraction when they pass through a narrow channel or around obstacles like piers. The waves bend around the corners, leading to patterns that spread out from the point of origin. 
The amount of diffraction depends on the wavelength of the wave and the size of the obstacle or aperture. As the wavelength increases, diffraction becomes more pronounced. Conversely, smaller openings or obstacles cause more significant bending or spreading of the waves. Diffraction has numerous practical applications. In everyday life, it explains why we can hear sounds around corners and why radio signals can penetrate obstacles. In science and engineering, diffraction patterns are used to analyze crystal structures, enabling researchers to understand the arrangement of atoms in a material. In the field of optics, diffraction gratings are used to disperse light into its component colors, essential for spectroscopy and analyzing light sources. Understanding diffraction is crucial for various disciplines, including physics, engineering, acoustics, and optics. Its study continues to play a vital role in advancing our knowledge of wave behavior and its applications in different areas of science and technology. Relativity Relativity, a groundbreaking theory formulated by Albert Einstein in the early 20th century, transformed our understanding of space, time, and gravity. It consists of two main branches, special relativity and general relativity. Special relativity, proposed in 1905, deals with the physics of objects moving at constant velocities in the absence of external forces. One of its key postulates is that the laws of physics are the same for all non-accelerating observers. This means that there is no absolute rest frame and the observed measurements depend on the relative motion between the observer and the observed object. Special relativity introduces the concept of time dilation, where time moves differently for observers moving at different velocities and length contraction, which changes an object's perceived length when it is moving relative to the observer. General relativity, formulated in 1915, is a more comprehensive theory that includes gravity. It presents a new understanding of gravity as the curvature of space-time caused by the presence of mass and energy. In this theory, massive objects like stars and planets curve the fabric of space-time around them, and other objects moving in that curved space-time follow curved paths, giving the appearance of gravitational attraction. General relativity correctly predicted phenomena like gravitational time dilation and the bending of light around massive objects. Both special and general relativity have been extensively tested and confirmed by various experiments and observations, including GPS technology, which requires corrections based on the effects of relativity to provide accurate positioning information. Relativity has had far-reaching implications on our understanding of the cosmos, from the behavior of subatomic particles to the evolution of the universe itself. It has influenced many aspects of modern physics, including quantum mechanics and cosmology, and continues to be a fundamental pillar of our understanding of the natural world. The theory has also inspired technological advancements and continues to fuel scientific exploration and curiosity about the mysteries of the universe. Photons and Matter Waves Photons and matter waves are fundamental concepts in physics that describe the dual nature of particles and waves at the quantum level. Photons are the elementary particles of light. They are massless and travel at the speed of light. Photons exhibit wave-particle duality, meaning they can behave as both particles and waves. As particles, they carry discrete packets of energy called quanta. This property is crucial for understanding phenomena like the photoelectric effect, where photons striking a material can release electrons. On the other hand, matter waves, also known as de Broglie waves, are associated with particles with mass, such as electrons, protons, and atoms. According to Louis de Broglie's hypothesis, these particles also exhibit wave-like characteristics, with their wavelength inversely proportional to their momentum. This wave-like behavior is evident in experiments like electron diffraction, where electrons passing through a crystal lattice create interference patterns. The wave-particle duality of photons and matter waves challenge classical physics, leading to the development of quantum mechanics. This revolutionary theory successfully explains phenomena that classical physics cannot account for, like the quantization of energy levels in atoms. In the context of the electromagnetic spectrum, 
Photons exhibit different properties based on their wavelength and frequency. Visible light represents a small portion of this spectrum, with shorter wavelengths corresponding to higher energy photons, e.g., ultraviolet and X-rays, and longer wavelengths representing lower energy photons, e.g., infrared and radio waves. Matter waves, on the other hand, are related to the behavior of particles in potential wells. For example, electrons and atoms are confined by the electric potential created by the nucleus, leading to quantized energy levels and discrete orbits. Understanding photons and matter waves is essential for modern physics and has practical applications in various fields, including quantum mechanics, electronics, and medical imaging, e.g., X-ray and MRI. These concepts continue to be a central focus of scientific research, pushing the boundaries of our understanding of the universe. More about matter waves. Matter waves, also known as de Broglie waves, are a fundamental concept in quantum mechanics that describe the wave-like behavior of particles with mass, such as electrons, protons, and atoms. This phenomenon was first proposed by Louis de Broglie in 1924 as a complement to the wave-particle duality concept introduced by Albert Einstein and Max Planck. The key idea behind matter waves is that particles, despite their localized nature, exhibit wave-like properties. According to de Broglie's hypothesis, every particle with momentum, p, has an associated wavelength, lambda, given by the de Broglie wavelength formula. Lambda 8, P. Where lambda is the wavelength, H is Planck's constant, approximately 6.626 times 10 to the power of negative 34 joule seconds, and P is the momentum of the particle. This equation suggests that as the momentum of a particle increases, its associated wavelength decreases. As a result, large objects like everyday macroscopic items have extremely tiny wavelengths, rendering the wave-like behavior practically unobservable. However, at the quantum scale, such as with electrons and atoms, the wavelengths become significant. When particles are in free space or in potential wells, like atoms, they can exhibit wave-like interference patterns, analogous to the patterns seen in classical wave phenomena like water waves. One of the most famous experiments demonstrating matter waves is the electron diffraction experiment, where a beam of electrons is directed at a crystalline structure. The electrons, despite being particles, create an interference pattern on the detector screen, characteristic of wave-like behavior. This experiment provided compelling evidence for the wave-particle duality of matter. The concept of matter waves is not merely theoretical. It has practical applications as well. For instance, electron microscopy utilizes the wave-like properties of electrons to achieve much higher resolution than conventional light microscopes. Furthermore, matter wave interferometry has been proposed as a means to test fundamental aspects of quantum mechanics and explore phenomena like gravitational waves. Overall, matter waves are an essential component of quantum mechanics, and their existence represents a significant departure from classical physics. They continue to be an area of active research and exploration as they play a crucial role in understanding the behavior of particles at the quantum level. All about atoms. Atoms are the fundamental building blocks of matter and the foundation of all physical substances. They are incredibly small, consisting of a nucleus composed of protons and neutrons, surrounded by electrons and energy levels, or shells. The nucleus contains positively charged protons and electrically neutral neutrons, while electrons are negatively charged particles that orbit the nucleus in specific energy levels. Atoms are categorized based on the number of protons in their nucleus, known as the atomic number. Elements are different types of atoms distinguished by their unique atomic numbers. The periodic table organizes elements based on their atomic numbers, and groups elements with similar properties together. The behavior of atoms is governed by the laws of quantum mechanics. Electrons occupy quantized energy levels, and they can jump between levels by absorbing or emitting energy in discrete packets called quanta or photons. These energy transitions are the basis for phenomena like emission and absorption spectra, 
which are crucial in identifying elements and understanding light properties. Chemical bonding occurs when atoms interact to form molecules or compounds. Atoms can share, gain, or lose electrons to achieve stable electron configurations, resulting in covalent, ionic, or metallic bonds, respectively. These bonds determine the characteristics and properties of the resulting substances. The nucleus itself is held together by the strong nuclear force, which overcomes the electromagnetic repulsion between positively charged protons. This force is incredibly powerful at very short ranges, but weakens rapidly over larger distances. Atoms are in constant motion due to thermal energy, leading to various states of matter. When atoms have high kinetic energy, they exist in the gaseous state. With lower kinetic energy, they form liquids, and with further reduction in energy, they become solids. The study of atoms and their interactions is crucial to understanding matter, chemical reactions, and the functioning of the universe at its most fundamental level. It underpins various scientific fields, including chemistry, physics, and material science. Through ongoing research and technological advancements, scientists continue to unveil the mysteries of atoms, paving the way for progress and innovation in numerous areas of science and technology. Conduction of Electricity in Solids Conduction of electricity in solids is a fundamental phenomenon that plays a crucial role in modern technology and everyday life. Solids can be broadly categorized into conductors, insulators, and semiconductors based on their ability to conduct electricity. Conductors, like metals, possess free electrons in their atomic structure. When an electric field is applied, these free electrons move through the material, carrying electric charge with them. This flow of electrons constitutes an electric current. Conductors have high conductivity due to the abundance of free charge carriers. On the other hand, insulators, such as rubber or glass, have tightly bound electrons that do not move easily when subjected to an electric field. This lack of free charge carriers results in minimal electric current flow through these materials. As a result, insulators have low conductivity and are used to prevent the loss of electrical energy or for insulating purposes. Semiconductors, like silicon or germanium, exhibit electrical properties that lie between conductors and insulators. At room temperature, they have fewer free electrons than conductors but more than insulators. Their conductivity can be significantly increased by introducing impurities, a process called doping, or by altering the temperature. This property is crucial in the functioning of electronic devices like transistors, diodes, and integrated circuits. The movement of electrons in conduction is influenced by various factors, such as temperature and the presence of impurities or defects in the crystal lattice. In some cases, electrons move freely in a phenomenon known as electron mobility, while in others, they can be impeded, leading to electrical resistance. Understanding the conduction of electricity in solids has led to remarkable technological advancements, including electricity transmission through conductive wires, the development of electronic devices, and the revolution of information technology. Researchers continue to explore new materials and technologies to enhance conductivity and pave the way for more efficient and sustainable electronic applications. By harnessing the principles of conduction, we can continue to innovate and shape the world around us. Nuclear Physics Nuclear physics is the branch of physics that explores the structure, behavior, and interactions of atomic nuclei, the central cores of atoms. It delves into the fundamental forces and processes that govern nuclear matter. At the core of nuclear physics is the study of nuclear reactions, which involve changes in the composition and energy of atomic nuclei. One significant aspect of nuclear physics is nuclear fission, the process of splitting a heavy atomic nucleus into smaller fragments. This process releases an immense amount of energy, and it is the principle behind nuclear power plants and nuclear weapons. Conversely, nuclear fusion involves combining light atomic nuclei to form heavier ones, releasing even more energy than fission. 
Fusion powers the sun and stars and holds the potential for clean and abundant energy on Earth. In addition to energy production, nuclear physics contributes to various fields. In nuclear medicine, radioactive isotopes are utilized for diagnostic imaging and cancer treatments. Understanding nuclear structure allows scientists to predict and synthesize elements and isotopes, leading to applications in material science and industry. Subatomic particles called quarks and gluons form the basis of nuclear matter and quantum chromodynamics, QCD, is the theory that describes their interactions. However, because of the complex nature of QCD, there is an ongoing quest to comprehend the properties of strongly interacting matter. The study of nuclear physics has led to significant discoveries about the fundamental nature of matter and the universe, as well as practical applications that impact our daily lives. Through advanced experimental techniques and computational simulations, researchers continue to unravel the mysteries of nuclear interactions, pushing the boundaries of human knowledge and opening up new possibilities for technology and energy production. This field plays a crucial role in shaping our understanding of the physical world and provides a foundation for further advancements in science and technology. Energy from the Nucleus Energy from the nucleus is a fundamental aspect of nuclear physics that plays a crucial role in our understanding of atomic and subatomic particles. This form of energy is harnessed from two distinct processes, nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. Nuclear fission involves the splitting of a heavy atomic nucleus into two or more smaller nuclei, accompanied by the release of a significant amount of energy. This process was famously utilized in nuclear power plants, where controlled fission reactions generate heat, which then converts water into steam to drive turbines and produce electricity. However, fission can also occur in an uncontrolled manner, as seen in nuclear explosions, leading to catastrophic consequences. On the other hand, nuclear fusion involves the merging of two light atomic nuclei to form a heavier nucleus. This process is what powers the sun and other stars, where the immense gravitational pressure and temperature at their cores enable fusion reactions to release vast amounts of energy in the form of light and heat. Scientists have been striving to replicate controlled fusion on Earth as a clean and virtually limitless energy source. However, it remains a complex challenge due to the extreme conditions required to sustain fusion reactions. Both nuclear fission and fusion involve mass energy equivalents, as described by Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared, where E represents energy, m is the mass loss during the nuclear reaction, and c is the speed of light. The energy released from the nucleus is millions of times greater than that from chemical reactions, making it a highly efficient and potent source of power. However, harnessing this energy comes with significant safety and environmental concerns, as seen with nuclear waste disposal and the potential for catastrophic accidents. Understanding and controlling energy from the nucleus are crucial endeavors in the field of nuclear physics as it has both the potential for tremendous benefits and grave consequences if not handled responsibly. Continued research and advancements in nuclear science aim to unlock new possibilities for safe and sustainable energy solutions in the future. Quarks, leptons, and the Big Bang Quarks and leptons are elementary particles, which means they are the smallest building blocks of matter in the universe. Quarks are the constituents of protons and neutrons, found in the atomic nucleus, while leptons include electrons and neutrinos, among others. Quarks come in six types or flavors, up, down, charm, strange, top, and bottom. They have fractional electric charges and interact through the strong force, which binds them together to form protons and neutrons. Leptons, on the other hand, have distinct flavors as well, electron, muon, and tau each accompanied by a corresponding neutrino. Leptons carry electric charge, but do not participate in the strong force. The Big Bang is the prevailing scientific theory explaining the origin of our universe. It suggests that the universe began as a singularity, an infinitely dense and hot point, approximately 13.8 billion years ago. Suddenly, 
it underwent an exponential expansion, leading to the formation of space, time, and all matter and energy we observe today. During the initial moments of the Big Bang, the universe was incredibly hot and dense, so much so that even protons and neutrons couldn't form. Instead, a dense soup of quarks, leptons, and other particles filled the universe. As the universe expanded and cooled, it allowed quarks to combine and form protons and neutrons. Later, these protons and neutrons combined to form atomic nuclei, and electrons started to orbit these nuclei, creating the first atoms. Over billions of years, these atoms aggregated into stars, galaxies, and larger structures. The formation of galaxies led to the emergence of gravity, which further shaped the universe. Subsequent processes gave rise to the diverse celestial bodies and structures we observe today. Understanding quarks, leptons, and the Big Bang is essential to comprehending the fundamental nature of the universe and its evolution from its earliest moments. This knowledge has led to a deeper understanding of cosmology and particle physics, enriching our understanding of the cosmos and the intricate interactions of the smallest particles that make up everything around us. And there you have it, explorers of the cosmos. We've journeyed through the depths of physics, from the intricacies of quantum mechanics to the awe-inspiring phenomena of astrophysics. But remember, our exploration doesn't end here. Dive deeper into the wonders of the universe by subscribing to our channel hitting the notification bell, and joining our community of curious minds. Together, we'll continue to unravel the mysteries of the cosmos and expand our understanding of the world around us. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and keep reaching for the stars.